why is there no rear wing at the back? There is, uh, in the relation, an opportunity to uh, achieve the required level of performance mm -hmm. without uh, really the need of a rear wing. Okay. That was the first thing. We also think that it's something that we can uh, use as an advantage. Uh, and also it was something that with our discussion with Matthias' team uh, was uh, clearly in the direction of the, you know, the breakthrough that, that he was mentioning earlier. So this car, as it looks now, will be really close to the, to the, real, the real race car. It should be very close. The, the, the surfaces of this car that we have now are basically what the, what the race car was about two to three months ago when we had to free the surfaces to release this model. Okay. Since then we've, we've carried on developing our, our, our concept, so there's been some changing but at least the, the main concept is there. Peugeot's 9x8 has caught the attention of many since it is running a race car without a rear wing. Even the lowest form of racing spots a rear wing all the way to top level racing. So why has Peugeot taken this risk at such a high level of racing? It could be a huge risk factor to their motorsport reputation if the car is not competitive with time and budget wasted. Maybe they've got something up their sleeves, so let's try to find out what they may be up to. One thing though, make or break, that huge task for doing something so radical definitely will draw some very interesting approach. It also reflects on Peugeot being consistent to racing at Le Mans, having brought some radical aerodynamic designs before. This definitely is a contribution to this culture of theirs. As mentioned, in their launch material, doing without a rear wing is to reduce coefficient drag. This shows that the car is designed specifically for the Le Mans 24 hours with its very high speed track layout. The fastest average speed per lap is 251.882 km an hour with a lap time of 3 minutes 14.791 seconds by Kamui Kabayashi in 2017 for pole position. Even though that's the case, it is not like successful teams did not run any rear wing and the last aerodynamically efficient approach to Le Mans was not successful in the Nissan LM GTR. That project, however, had many other flaws that betrayed Paul B's idea. Now that the rear wing has been removed, immediately the deck takes a noticeably unconventional form. It has a rear ledge or spoiler that hangs over the rear diffuser outlet. It is also as wide as the rear diffuser below it, hinting at a design that is to influence the diffuser from atop rather than absolutely creating downforce on its own. What draws attention is the low depth gap between the center pod section to the rear wheel arches. If good flow was to be designed to maximize updraft past that rear spoiler to influence the rear diffuser, it would be important to keep this section clean for better airflow towards the lower surface of the slanting rear deck. But instead, at the very center, blocking a clean airflow are exhaust pipes. What Peugeot could do if they wanted to get better airflow past the spoiler is to leave this deep section clean and could mount the exhaust at the closing of the center rear section. They could even make use of the exhaust gas velocity from the middle to influence the diffuser even more. This is not the case with the 9X5. If we were to try and make out its design around the philosophy of high velocity exhaust gases using anti-lag blowing the rear deck, then having those exhausts placed there makes perfect sense. In fact, it looks like the entire rear deck is completely designed around this concept, with those vertical end plates confirming it. Say if those exhaust has the turbo anti-lag map turned off, in the sense that exhaust gas velocity would be much lower. With the way those exhaust outlets is designed and positioned, it will be blocking smooth high flow path and would be better off having the exhaust outlet at the center pod instead but this is not the case. The exhaust outlet location is tucked between the wheel arch and center pod, probably to scavenge and influence even more airflow around this semi-enclosure. The idea can be seen below the exhaust tip with air ventilation that looks to also take advantage of high velocity, low pressure zone exhaust gas extraction. By the looks of it, Peugeot replaced 
the real spoiler with an absolute interpretation of what is known in Formula One as a blown diffuser. It is known that many designs take advantage of high velocity exhaust gases for aerodynamic gains, but it looks like Peugeot is taking it further with a design completely dependent around high velocity exhaust gases. Another advantage in doing this with turbocharged sync cars. Noticed on the Peugeot, there is no MGUH or motor generator unit heat on the turbocharged system of the 90 degree V6 engine. It points at a design of having anti-lag by a more traditional blown turbo by exhaust gases rather than using an MGUH electric motor. This would generate much more exhaust gas velocity and would be more useful for aerodynamic benefits. In Formula 1, it was during the naturally aspirated era that blown diffuser prevailed before the FIA started to crack down and reduce its advantages. Naturally aspirated engine with its limited volumetric efficiency would be limited to how much it could influence a diffuser. With turbocharging, they could produce so much more exhaust velocity. Off throttle or mild throttle allows for a much higher boost potential as the combustion chamber pressure would be much lower with a lot less heat. Mapping the anti-lag to maximum turbo impeller RPM can produce significant amount of gas velocity, effectively turning a turbocharged engine into a very powerful exhaust gas pump for aerodynamic gains. With the 9x8, this would be translated as a 700 horsepower engine's exhaust gas velocity. Maybe excessive, but think F1 fan car here. If the top section of the Peugeot's rear deck is completely designed around this, the way Murray's F1 fan car's floor design converge around the fan. Interestingly, with such a design feature, Peugeot says that the new regulation only allows one aerodynamic device to have adjustments. If Peugeot is designing that rear deck around exhaust gas velocity assisted aerodynamics, then they could map and have two adjustments instead, giving them superior aerodynamic balance. It would be very interesting if they could pull it off, not being at a disadvantage on downforce while improving on coefficient drag. Wonder if they would face issues with reliability with such a setup, how efficient it is as a rear wing replacement is going to draw a lot of curiosity and interest. It would also answer questions as to how much drag a Le Mans race car's rear wing has.